Well, all right, it's week one, so let's have another weekly edition of how awesome Brock Purdy was. That was what we were doing all the end of last year, and it's continuing as he continues to play really well. We're going to get you know a little bit uh, more of the 49ers offense, not just Brock Purdy in this video, but mostly Purdy and kind of what he did well and why he was able to really have a great game uh, in this one that many expected to be a close game. So, yeah, let's just get into it. Let's start off with this play. What's going to happen here is this is uh, sort of the classic. Can you get? Uh, can you be a number one wide receiver? Can you be a good quarterback? The kind of the key play I feel like not necessarily in terms of how common it is but in terms of how important it is especially for a team like San Francisco who loves to run these over the middle routes loves to run the football effectively a lot of times what t defenses want to do to counter that is to play a single safety deep meaning that if you can have someone win on a go route on the outside that can be huge because then defenses feel like they can't play this coverage either. So let's see if Purdy can win here. It's Ayuk who's on the outside going up against Patrick Peterson. And watch how once this play begins, you do see that Purdy, I mean, he's looking there the whole time. He knows where he's throwing the football, and it's not really that open. But here's the advantage, and here's why Purdy threw it. For one, hey, let's just give your receiver a chance. But also, Peterson's back is turned towards Purdy. Peterson can't really play the ball right here. He's playing the receiver. And so, because of that, putting the ball up there means that your receiver can adjust to the ball, whereas the defensive back cannot. And so as you see, it was it a great, perfect throw? In a sense, yes, because it's where Purdy wanted it to be. It was more of a good decision, I would say, than a you know good throw. But at the end of the day, if you're getting a touchdown, what's the difference? And I was even kind of thinking about this play in the context of Purdy in that I think in some ways, maybe him being you know someone who wasn't a hyped-up draft pick and falling so far in the draft actually has been a pretty big benefit to his game for the San Francisco offense because he never tries to do too much. He knew knew that the way he was going to get playing time and the way he was going to stick around was to just do what the coach wanted him to do, just be a game manager. Because of that, you don't see him getting a big ego. You don't see him trying to do too much. He's just consistently trying to do the right play, which has been a really big benefit so far for San Francisco. Going over here, it's not to say that he can't make some good plays, though, obviously. I'm definitely not saying that. This play is a zone coverage play. Again, simple. What San Francisco likes to do. Uh, this is, you know, that last play helps set up these plays because now you have two safety deep coverages. So, okay, got to throw over the middle here. You have a receiver. This is Debo Samuel running over the middle. So, all right, let's take a look there and see if he can get open. Right off the bat, Purdy is going to take the snap, not even a play action here, and because of that, a linebacker's drop back in the coverage and is in a pretty good position to try and make a play. He's getting over. I would say this is pretty good defense by 55 here for Pittsburgh. At the end of the day, no matter how good your play calling is, no matter how good your receivers are, all of that stuff, you're still going to have to make the throws. And Purdy has a window to make this throw, but it's not a huge window. And can he do it? Well, of course he can. I mean, again, you probably knew, by the way, I set up this video that, yeah, he can. But again, that's a good throw. It's not the, you know, it's not Ben Roethlisberger to Heinz Ward in the Super Bowl, right? But you're rarely going to have those scenarios. What's more important is just hitting the, you know, medium windows consistently, which is what he can do. Of course, I don't want to make it seem like they're all really tight windows. No, there absolutely are some throws that are, you know, easier to make. This one, I believe, I believe this is supposed to be man coverage. I can't actually tell if this is, uh, maybe someone blew a coverage here, and that might have been the uh, the issue. If I had the all 22, I could probably describe it a little bit better. Uh, so again, uh, if someone in the comments uh, has a theory, I'm sure you'll post it in the comments below, and I would appreciate it. But uh, for now, uh, what I believe happens is this is supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. It's once again brand and I, you, this route on paper could work, so that's where Purdy's going to look towards. As you see, Purdy does, in fact, take the snap. He fires over here, and you see that right here, there is a wide-open receiver. Ayuk got wide open here. The reason why I thought maybe it was a blown coverage is it looked like the player who was supposed to cover Ayuk played really far off. I think maybe he thought it was zone. Everyone else thought it was man. Kind of looked, was, looked like what happened. But again, guy wide open, you know, easy throw for Purdy to make. That's true, but... It, Again, it's just as difficult to make a throw exactly where you want it to be if the receiver is wide open as if they're covered, and there still is value in putting this ball right on the money here. 
as you see, Purdy does, in fact, put this one right on the money, which allows Ayuk to pick up a little bit more yards. It wasn't anything crazy on this play, but let's be honest, we've seen it be crazy on other plays, and Ayuk still did get an extra five yards Then, if the throw made Ayuk, you know, have to slow down and get tackled right away. So there still was added value in that simply, but obviously, uh, you know, not the highest degree of difficulty throw, not saying it is, but, you know, the thing about Purdy is he makes the easy throws, he makes the medium throws, and he makes the hard throws too when he has to. But also, this is a really important play, and understanding what Brock Purdy's value is for, for San Francisco, and why we've seen really them have more success than they had even when like Garoppolo was quarterback, and I think we all agree, Garoppolo maybe not a star quarterback, but a quality quarterback, someone who can play. The reason why we've seen San Francisco have even more success with Purdy is, you know, I would say he makes less mistakes, Purdy does, but also something like this, which just this is really Purdy's value at the end of the day, where it's going to be a zone cover play and the idea is to get Brandon Ayuk isolated one-on-one -on, -one on the outside that's what they're trying to do here it's a zone blitz that Pittsburgh is running right here and what they're going to do is they're going to have first the uh you have to have a player who's running to take away the safety and so that's what they want to do get the safety out of the way get Ayuk one-on-one -on, -one on the outside hopefully he can get a touchdown as you see, Purdy runs this play action, but look at his eyes, and look at how he's looking very much towards the offense's left. He is helping the safety believe that a throw is going to go in that direction. That's a really small detail, but these are really important factors in trying to help your guys get open. Because again, people will often view it from a, from a quarterback's perspective as, oh, you didn't have a great game, you just hit the open guy. Part of why guys get open is because of what the quarterback can do with their eyes and do with their decision making. Because look how when Purdy then, you know, looks back towards the offense's right and looks towards Ayuk, he got wide open. I mean, he, all he had to do, again, this wasn't all because Ayuk looked you know, turned his eyes away. Ayuk ran a great route. The corner kind of slipped a little bit in getting over. And so because of that, Ayuk got way past the corner. But the reason why there isn't a safety here to make the play was because A, there was a setup route, but B, because Purdy used his eyes to help get this a lot more open. So Purdy's throw is a you know relatively easy throw to make. He makes the throw, and plenty of people would look at this and say, okay, yeah, whatever. You hit the open guy, you know, uh, who couldn't do that? And the answer is still plenty of people. But, uh, you know, regardless, that's what some people might say. But you also have to take the full context and, you know, realize that part of why he was able to hit the open guy is also because he's Purdy and he's, you know, able to do the things that, you know, the intelligent things to help get guys open as well. They're definitely... Part of it is, you know, value that he's bringing to the table that's getting guys open. And of course, I got to talk about a Christian McCaffrey play. You might be saying, wait a second, isn't this a Brock Purdy video? Why are you talking about Christian McCaffrey? Well, because it's kind of related and shut up, it's fun. So uh, we're going to start off this play by talking about Brandon Ayuk. Very odd thing you might be thinking I'm doing, but you'll see why in a second. So, okay, Brandon Ayuk, his block is he's going to start off blocking the edge rusher, but then he's going to move up to the next level eventually. That's kind of what he's supposed to do. Just get in the way of the edge rusher. You're not expecting him to fully be able to block this edge rusher one-on-one, -on -one, but... You know, edge rusher not exactly expecting Ayuk to be blocking him, so that element of surprise can sometimes, you know, actually allow you to block him one-on-one -on -one and let the uh, tight end who's next to you go and block someone at the next level. However, here it doesn't quite work as designed. Ayuk kind of gets blocked out of the way a little bit. Tight end's able to pick it up, make a nice play, but Ayuk, you know, uh, still is able to get to the next level. But again, in a perfect world, you would have a tight end at the next level instead of uh, a wide receiver at the next level. So yeah, anyway, let's just get back to uh, Christian McCaffrey now. You know, the play itself, the run play itself, nothing crazy is happening at this point, right? I mean, he's, you know, at where you typically expect him to be at this spot. Okay, there's a defender who should come over and make a tackle. Well, here's where Christian McCaffrey magic comes in. Watch him pull off the spin move, completely get by him, and oh, hey, there's now a defender trying to tackle him. Look who's supposed to be making the block. It's Brandon Ayuk. Now, like I said, you'd like this to be a tight end, right? It's Brandon Ayuk. What is he going to be able to do? Well, watch him. I mean, just annihilate this block. Knock the defender to the ground. And, I mean, that's just an incredible play by him. I mean, really good stuff. McCaffrey's further down the field at this point. And now he has another uh, skill position player who's, you know, down the field trying to make a play. This is number three, Ray Ray McLeod, another wide receiver trying to see if he can, you know, help out. And again, for these big runs, a lot of times it isn't just the offensive lineman and the running back making the play. A lot of times you need all 10 blockers, or I guess nine blockers because there's a halfback, all nine blockers to make a play. 
and watch Ray Ray McLeod really pull this off nicely. McCaffrey does some great work to help out his blocker and you know run around where the defender is. And even I think the threat of Ayuk getting forward down there still made it tougher to make the tackle. And also McCaffrey is awesome and is able to pull off the play that way. So awesome team offense. And this is just kind of what we expect from San Francisco, really. I think you could argue this play wasn't ideal. I mean, he didn't really uh, have the internal body clock that maybe you would have liked to see him have here. I think this is probably the one nitpick you would have. You know, it would have been nice for him to, uh, again, it was his blind side. I'm not, not blaming him necessarily for not being able to see it. But at the same time, you know, TJ Watts one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Got to be a little bit more aware than that, I think. So that's it's a nitpick, but that wasn't kind of, you know, he did lose the football and uh, Watt recovered there. So yeah, that's kind of what I thought of this one. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.